Hey, YouTube friends and family. I'm back. I am, and I apologize for that last video. You know, it's... When you love everybody like I do, the thought of someone coming in and ripping us apart or putting a division between us, it's too much to handle. It really is. Unacceptable. Anyway, I'm back. What I wanted to uh, get on here about is all the stuff that's taking place. We've got friends over in Colorado that just suffered horrible storm. Absolutely horrible. Destroyed gardens, plants, roses, trees. Go to CT Watcher. CT Watcher. All lowercase. Check her channel out. It, um, wow. That storm, she was crying, bless her heart, and I don't blame her. But she shows us this ice, not hail, these big chunks of ice, almost looks like flat, flat pebbles of ice that fell from the sky, destroyed her garden. It was terrible. Geoengineering. Geoengineering. She's going to get a hold of a lawyer on Monday. And uh, I hope she does. And I hope she finds one with, excuse me, balls. Willing to stand up to this atrocity. Have a lot of videos out here right now on this uh, Nibiru. Some people say Nibiru. Some people say Wormwood. That's a mouthful. Say that ten times fast. Other people call it Planet X. And then some are speculating that this comet Ison could actually be Nibiru. I'm not knowledgeable enough to know. And the people that have the technology that probably do know NASA well they're not telling us <sighs> when you look at that you look at the closures of the embassies and some of the other stuff that's going on kinda makes you wonder what really is going on you know the why close all the uh, embassies. Doesn't make any sense. Something isn't adding up. That's a shock, isn't it? Something in this administration or the one just before it doesn't add up? Yeah, that's shocking. Anyway, I've been going through a lot of the comments and there's a lot of people really concerned, really worried about this stuff. Should we be? Should we be worried? I don't know. I don't have any answers. I don't have a crystal ball. And the way things have been going around here, if I had one, it'd be broken. So I can't answer that. I can't say whether it's happening or, you know, if it's actually for a fact. But what, what I can say is that something isn't right. You know, it, it, I, I can feel it. My beautiful green trees are turning yellow. Pure yellow. Like the chlorophyll is just depleted. Leaves are falling off. It's crazy. Garden. My garden. Is just not right. Something is just not right. You can feel it in the air. You can see it in people's faces. So my question is, should we be alarmed or frightened? The answer to that is a very personal one. Each person has to determine or justify their own feelings. We must each come to a joint to the point of 
realizing our place in this. Everybody has their own place. The way we were raised, the way we think, the habits we have, the habits we don't have, our style. So it's a personal thing. Whether somebody should be alarmed or frightened. You know, it's, uh, we have to realize our place in this, our individual rules of play in the game of life. In order to know if we should be alarmed, afraid, or aware enough to do what we can to be prepared, as prepared as we can be. You know, I keep telling people, like many others and, and all the preppers, shelter, food, water, and uh, medical supplies. And of course we need gear, we'll call it tools, for hunting. Try and do whatever we can. Many people are still denying that there is an object, that an object in the sky even exists. Many people say it doesn't. But boy, I'll tell you what, we've been getting all kinds of footage. People are capturing this on their uh, telescopes and their cameras. They're making videos of it. So, too many to say it's a hoax. There's something out there. You know? The deniers are saying there's nothing we should be concerned about. Some are already moving stuff out from underneath their beds, preparing a hiding place for themselves. Know what I mean? We have people purchasing underground bunkers. Thousands of dollars. Thousands. Tens of thousands. For underground bunkers. And then, sadly enough, you know, with times the way they are, and the fear raising in some people, the sense of hopelessness, there's people even committing suicide. A lot of people are repenting their sins and turning to religion. And those that just know that whatever's going to be is going to be. Que sera, que sera. Whatever will be, will be. The future's not ours to see. Remember that song? I love it. Love that song. Frankly, what we're being faced with is the unknown. The absolute unknown. That in itself can be very unnerving. Often frightening. You know, what can we do to make things better for ourselves? Or for those that we love? I have a fly pestering me. Sorry about that, guys, if I'm waving at you. Anyway. Don't want to kill him, because if I do, there will be ten that come to the funeral. Sure as the dickens. See him scoochying around? They always dive bomb your face. You ever notice that? Or try to get into your ear. Anyway, so what can we do to make things better for ourselves? Or for those that we love? Better even for our neighbors. What can we do? I wish I had all the answers. I sure do. I know you probably do too. How cool would that be? That we could just say, okay, here's the deal. This is what will definitely happen. And here's what we can do to survive or walk away safely. However, that's extremely unrealistic. None of us have that crystal ball. At least one that works. What we do have is a bunch of dusty old scrolls and plates that describe an event that mirrors this or may not mirror this. Given that we must do what we think is best just in case, we should start preparing for the worst scenario. 
and then move forward from there. Do whatever you can to prepare in your own home. I mean, what's it going to hurt? You gather up a bunch of water, some food. You know, make sure that your family is going to be safe. Then if nothing does happen, you're prepared for maybe an earthquake or a tornado. You know, I do believe that you need to decide who your God is. Get up and personal with your God. Whoever your God is. Talk to him. Ex you know, extend your relationship. Get downright personal with God. Think back. Evaluate yourself. Repent for any wrongs that you've done and ask for forgiveness. It's not hard. It's really that simple. You reach inside your heart. You find that I'm really sorry button and you push it. You tell your God that you're sorry for any wrongs that you've done. I mean, who wants to leave this place carrying that kind of baggage? Just in case, I mean. You know, for those that don't believe in God at all and prefer to believe in the Big Bang Theory, well, that's okay. Everybody's entitled to their own beliefs. But get ready for another Big Bang. Know what I mean? It's not about whether God exists. Well, it is. It is about that, but you got to ask for guidance. And where are you going to ask for guidance? You think your gubernment's going to tell, tell you anything? You think NASA will? Your neighbor? Friends, family, who's going to give you guidance? Who can you talk to? I talk to God. I hang out my bedroom window, and it's always around 3 in the morning. For some reason, I wake up every morning at 3. And I just lean out my window and talk to him. Very personal. It helps. You might start with that. Be prepared for life without technologies too, guys. I mean, we live in this easy switch on, switch off life. You know, where we can pick up something and just press a button or flip a switch and We need to prepare like the preppers have been telling us to do for so long. It's just a matter of survival under any circumstances. Joplin, Missouri can tell you about that. The people in Louisiana, Florida, anywhere there's been a hurricane, a storm, a flood. They can tell you all about being prepared just in case. So shelter, food, water, medical supplies, your hunting and fishing tools, tools, guys. Prepare. You know, we need to get used to the idea of living like people lived before there was a five o'clock news and a TV to watch it on. You know, what if this is all hype and nothing happens? You're still prepared. Think about it that way. Pat yourself on the back for being prepared. But look at the behavior this past week of our government. One might be wise to say something is definitely up. Something's not right. I can smell it. I feel it in the air. Don't you? Something's not right. All the questions will 
just go on and on. We just have no way of knowing without whistleblowers spewing the truth. However, what we do know, if we were at all paying any attention, is that something is happening. Something is just not right. All the sinkholes, the uptick in earthquakes, the bad storms, the extra objects in our object in our sky, trees being drained of chlorophyll and gardens dying and not growing right, and the unspoken warnings shown by governments through their own behavior, like FEMA ordering as many survival packages of food as they can get delivered in a 24-hour period. What's that about? Just happened this last week. You know, prophecies were written. And those visions that are being shared today, or the promises made in, in Scripture, whatever it is that you believe or think you know, it would just be wise to be prepared just in case. You know, be afraid. Be afraid. No. There's nothing to fear. Quite frankly, the evil ones, they know. They know what's coming. And they're afraid. But we have nothing to fear concerned enough to do whatever we can to protect our family and friends and help neighbors and and I mean help neighbors yes we should do that willing to to work together and help each other absolutely yes you know it's very simple very simple if we just get off the me, me, me's. Mine, mine, mine. Me, me, me. Pay attention, it's about me. Don't touch that, it's mine. No, you can't have any of that, it's mine. If we just get off of that and make it a we thing, us, ours, it is all ours. Everything belongs to all of us. So, whether this happens, friends, whatever's going on, just be good to each other. Love each other. Take care of each other. Share with each other. Believe me, it's hard times. Without all this other government stuff, without the thing in the sky, whether it's Nibiru, Wormwood, Planet X, Comet Ison, whatever it is. Without that, my family can tell you it's really hard. Very tough. It's been a rough year. But we've made it. And that's the thing. We've made it. We still have a lot of hurdles. It's kind of like being on that big roller coaster ride. You know, we, we wanted to be here for this event. We wanted to be here. And we are. Now we're up at the top. Strapped into the car. Getting ready to go down. And we're going. Holy crud. Mother of Pearl. Yeah. It's going to be a white knuckle ride probably. But I'm in it with you. And you're in it with me. And we can do this. Because we're brave. Just put our hearts where it belongs. It's not a me thing. It's not a you thing. It's a we thing. I love you guys so much. 
Thank you for all the great comments and the spirit lifting and the love and the hugs in return. You know, few people know this until I say it right now. But uh, I'm starved for that. I'm starved for love. Aren't you? Loneliness is like the diamond without the ring. I love you all. Let's get the diamond and the ring together. It's a wee thing. And I'm going to chase that fly out of here with my handy dandy duster. So I'm going to let you guys go. Love you bunches. Hope this isn't too long. And uh, I don't know how to say things in less time, guys. I just don't know how. Great big hugs. Whole bunch of love. Catch you guys later.